Welcome everyone. Today I'm here with Infinite Forges and we're going to talk about some of the things that he as a big forger wants to see from Forge in Halo Infinite. So why don't you say hello? What's up everybody? Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. So the, the first question is actually a question that's a little bit less in depth, but it's just how important do you think Forge is for the success of Halo Infinite? I believe it's a core component uh, simply because of the fact that if you look at Halo 5, and how that game has carried on throughout the years. A lot of the matchmaking maps uh, were actually Forge maps. And what's interesting about that is the fact that it, we're talking five, what, almost, it's five years later now, right? Mm -hmm. People are still playing on Halo 5, obviously not as much as before, but it's not dev maps that they're playing, it's custom games that, that are made by the community. And essentially, if, if Halo Infinite's going to be a platform for the next 10 years, right, where it's going to operate a lot like MCC, you can only imagine that what they want to do is double down on a thing that made a game relevant for five years straight, right? Um, so I, I think it's a core component. I, I think it absolutely has to launch with Halo Infinite. And, and I do believe that without Forge, there is a serious that halo infinite could take a serious hit just when it comes to replayability and and capturing and retaining an audience yeah no i i totally agree there i think one of the the big uh down not downfalls one of the big problems with halo 5 at launch like you mentioned was that it didn't launch with forge i just after having Forge as a core aspect of Halo for so many years, to launch a game without it was just a huge step back. And I think that is part of the reason Halo 5 had such a big drop off in players. We were missing Forge, we were missing Big Team Battle, we were missing Social, and, and all those core aspects. These aren't ancillary game modes. These are game modes that have huge followings. There's people who love Forge in Halo. There's people that love BTB, and not having those at launch is de that was definitely a big misstep so hopefully they don't make that again i want to follow up on that question though because you were kind of talking about how halo 5 actually like a later into its lifespan a lot of the matchmaking maps actually became forge maps do you mm -hmm. think that should be the direction that halo infinite goes because i think that halo 5 had an amazing forge and a lot of the maps that came out of forge were really cool and like some of the maps that you made are absolutely amazing sometimes you can't even they, they're so close, sometimes you can't tell that they're Forge maps. But I do think, especially some of the maps that they chose to put in matchmaking, I think it hurt Halo 5. I, I understand at that point they weren't making new maps, so this was like a band-aid for new content. But I kind of hope that Halo Infinite... I hope we have an amazing Forge, and I hope that they support Forgers and they incorporate their maps and stuff into matchmaking. But I also want to see new maps throughout the lifespan of halo infinite i don't want 343 to, to so heavily rely on forge like they kind of did in halo 5 and do you kind of agree with that or do you think that 343 leaning so heavily on forge was actually a good thing in halo 5 so my opinion on this is that forge is essential when it comes to the re replayability and just capturing the audience keeping the audience however when it comes to the actual multiplayer, I, I don't think that that's essential and actually that shouldn't be done. But that depends on whether or not the Forge is incredibly immersive and it has ray tracing in it and it has a lot of different immersive environments and multiple landscape features, multiple, um, you know, tree and plant and wildlife features, you know, like there's no, I mean, they've talked about Forge a little bit already and, and I think there was a quote that says, the forge is ridiculous or something like that like ridiculously powerful and i forget who said that but i heard that um and i think that it did come from a reliable source i mean correct me on that <laughs> someone in the comments will say something about it <laughs> but the thing is like i have no doubt that they're gonna give players even more to work with now um and and i don't i i don't think even though the maps will look prettier and better and more in-depth than ever before that they should be replacing dev made maps because i like to see a game be supported with with maps that have been made by the community that made the game you know uh and that there should be a separation between forge and actual dev made maps i, I do believe there should be a difference but a mix but the reality is what's probably going to end up happening is that they're going to lean on forge quite a bit 
because they want the feature to be used. They want there to to be an like an incentive, right? For people mm -hmm. to create maps because one of the big things is that if you got one of your maps into matchmaking you actually get a helmet out of it if you get into halo waypoint for or sorry the um halo spotlight uh, you know you get certain armor pieces and and uh, no sorry in halo 5 it was a weapon coating for uh the assault rifle which is the fire unicorn it's like little things that give people reasons to to put in effort and i think that's going to return without a doubt. So I welcome forge maps, but only forge maps, I think is the disservice. I, and and I, I think that they should definitely rely more on dev made maps, especially with how much time they've had. Uh, I do feel that that will be more relevant in this game than it was in the prior. Yeah. I think, I, I think having a good mix of it as Halo infinite gets gears down the line, I think would, would be pretty healthy. Uh, I obviously we we want to see Forge supported and and the Forge content that comes out of it is awesome and it's really cool to see the community create cool things. But yeah, I just hope that they don't fully lean on it, kind of like they did with Halo Five. But like you were saying, and three four three has kind of said it, and it's just kind of the trend. As every iteration of Forge has come out, it's gotten more and more complicated, and it's gotten closer to being more of a map editor and less of like. In Halo Three, it was kind of just. It was almost a game mode that you could play with your friends that you could also just happen to make maps in. Whereas like in Halo 5, it's basically a map editor, but just watered down a little bit. Not like totally, but it's just it's not a full straight up like pull up a map editor on your PC quite yet. But I think with Infinite, we're probably going to get closer to that. Do you think that's a direction that Forge should be going or do you think it's important for Forge to retain some of the simplicity that it had in the past so that like more casual forgers can get into it and play around with it. So it's a great question because I'm in the middle with this. I believe a hundred percent that I'll start with casual players. I believe that essentially it should be easy for no, for, for certain people to understand. Right. But I mean, they actually had that in Halo 5 where there was an entire description on the side that was like, hey, this is, you know, all the tools for, for Forge. And if you're more experienced, you can get rid of that section and, and whatnot. So there, there was guiding points for Forge in Halo 5, but I, I can understand for someone that hasn't spent a lot of time with it, kind of just got in there. You know, you spawn a Warthog and a couple paths and <laughs> you just try to create something fun, you know? Mm -hmm. But like... To create an entire environment takes a lot of thinking and just momentum and um, like creative momentum, right? And not a lot of people even desire to do that. They're just like, I just want to mess around so I can create a really goofy infection map that, mm -hmm. you know, was similar to what we played in Halo 3. That is the beauty of Forge, right? That it can go in two different directions. I do believe, uh, however, though, that this should most definitely expand become more immersive, become even more in depth. But I think what's important is is to allow players that have controls that are that are easy to understand. You know, I, I I think that's what it comes down to. I don't I don't think sacrificing the progression of Forge to to appease one casual player or uh, a pro forger is is, is good. I think that finding a middle ground where it's like, hey, we need to advance this thing because progression, that's that's only right. Um, but I do believe that that there, there's going to be a middle ground of some sort where the controls will be a little easier than Halo 5 and that the landscape editors will be a little bit more straightforward. Maybe you'll be able to paint on some um, grass and paint on some flowers and, and, and whatnot and mountaintops. You can get a similar to Far Cry 5, everyone kind of points towards that right and the reality is is even if they make the landscape even if they make the elements of forge more simpler right but however at the same time creating more in-depth and immersive environments right because that's what far cry did it's a pretty easy editor but when you jump into it landscapes look real you know what i mean mm -hmm. i i think that that'll be a success however uh you could have people that have all these tools and still make mountains that look like candy cones, you know, or what? What do they call them? Um, they're candy like canes? white candy. No, no, not candy canes. No, I forget what they're called, but they're just like 
pointy little Halloween candies. I forget. Oh, but uh, yeah, that's candy corn. Candy corn. Okay. Okay. Yeah, candy corn. <laughs> I mean, mountains that will look like that, and, and people won't really know how to exactly detail them, and that's not a problem. You know, mess with it however you want and practice until you become better, but um, I believe there's going to be a middle ground of some sort like that if, if what I'm say, saying here is making sense. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And let me kind of piggyback off that question. So with Halo Infinite, uh, 343 has said it's going to be on PC at launch. Do you think that 343 should kind of play into that a bit and add more of those really in-depth features that you see in just a full-fledged map editor on a PC? Or do you think they should continue to have it kind of uniform so that anyone on an Xbox with a controller can make the same maps as someone on PC with like a mouse and keyboard and able to like automate scripting and stuff like that? I think the Forge is going to be the same similar to Halo 5 right mm -hmm. i mean there wasn't there wasn't really any differences between the two it's just it maybe it was a little easier to select things it was a little quicker to do it on pc than it was halo you know five on xbox mm -hmm. but i don't think that there's going to be different mechanics in a sense i just feel like maybe the ease and the ability to move objects and select objects delete objects all this other stuff it'll, it'll just be a little bit more efficient but i don't think it'll be completely different um so yeah, I think what's interesting about PC is that it's going to go from a community just on Xbox to to such a large audience. Forge is going to be, which is why Infinite Forge is my brand, right? But that that I that I'm building everything on. It's like that I, I built that because of the fact that I know there's going to be so many creations, and a big focus of mine is just to be able to 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 promote maps to be able to share maps just in any way possible game nights all types of stuff because i know that it's going to be one of the biggest features of halo infinite i already know and um i look forward to that so pc is just going to be even you know the cherry on top dude it's going to be great yeah for sure i kind of yeah i think with especially with halo infinite not only is it on pc but it's also the multiplayer is going to be free to play as long as 343 does the Forge mode well and does the game well, I mean, the the Forge community and all that, can it could ri not maybe, maybe not rival totally because Fortnite's huge, but you could see a lot of the same trends that you see out of like the Fortnite creative mode community where like there's entire YouTube channels dedicated to maps that are made in there and game modes and stuff. And you'll, you'll really see the numbers of that explode with it being free to play compared to like halo 5 where it was a niche game mode and kind of a niche game and whatnot with that we can kind of move on kind of we'll, we'll back up a little bit and i'll ask you as someone that forged a ton in halo 5 and i believe you forged in the other games to some degree correct yeah I mean, I've, I've forged for years man but the thing is i took a break for a good amount of time um come back and pass six to eight months now right just been forging on halo 5 and put out like 20 plus maps <laughs> <laughs> gotcha yeah no that's fair so what would you say are some of the biggest issues that you have with halo 5's forge or just the biggest issues that other halo 5 forgers have had a big thing that i've i was actually just talking to uh some very credible forgers yesterday and uh, a lot of it just comes down to lighting a lot of it comes down to object count and basically the bottom line is that you know people have big ideas creative individuals just they want to build bigger they want to build better they always want to do something that pushes what they've done before so it's the limitations of halo 5 forge although you can look at something and say wow that looks really in detail that looks awesome that was limited because of frame rate uh that was limited because of you know just a bunch of different gameplay elements and it, it's a lot of limitations that you just don't see i what i want to see in halo infinite is something more streamlined when it comes to the creation of landscapes right which is why i'm saying you know paint on grass instead of having blocks of grass you know mm -hmm. squares i mean make it a little bit more optimal a little bit more efficient make it a little bit more give give their players a little bit more ease when it comes to just building the basics you know um, one of the big things for me is don't make spawn points objects. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like it, it's, there's, there's a few things in there that are just needing to be evolved. And, and I do believe that out of all the forge maps that came out of Halo 5, they got a ton of data from that. 
and whoever is building the forge because i don't believe it's 343 i think it's a third party company um that's creating this i think that what they're what they're really focusing on is hey how can we just build upon all the tools that we gave them just make those individual tools far more efficient for the player so that maps could become even that much better and 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 that much more optimized right so when you look at landscape there's squares right now right but before there wasn't even real landscapes. There was like rocks, right? So you can see the progression of where this is going. It goes from nature being trees and rocks to then being full on, you know, uh, asteroid and snow and barrens and alpine um, squares of, of land, right? That you can maneuver and create hills out of and all this other stuff to where I think this is going to go next is essentially, hey, you can jump in here without taking anything of the budget, right? You just, let, let's say it has a, it's, it was 1600 for the object count currently in Halo 5, right? Let's say it's about 3000, right? Or so, let's just say they double it up, right? I don't know if they will or not, or if there even is going to be an object count. But let's just say that happens, right? I don't believe that landscape will be a thing of, of object count. I don't believe that respawn points will be a thing of, of object count. I think objects will be specifically the physical objects that you put on the map, whether they be trees and rocks, whether they be, um, you know, things of that nature, like construction objects and cars and, 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 you know, walls and uh, floors and all this other stuff. Right. But building an actual landscape, I don't think will necessarily, you know, uh, contribute to the object count anymore and that's just something personally i'm looking forward to um because that allows me then to make an immersive environment and then be very selective with the detail that i that i can put into that environment without having to worry about how big i'm building the environment because it's taking up too many objects yeah no that that totally makes sense it kind of the way you're kind of describing that uh and i don't know how much you've ever used it and i'll be honest i haven't used it at all this just comes from watching youtube videos but it makes me think a little bit of Halo 2 Vista's map editor where you can go in and kind of mold the the layout of your map like the I don't know, like the the terrain or whatnot and then from there you can take textures and paint it all over that and that's how you can get all your different stuff and then from there you can place your bases and your trees and your vehicles and and all the stuff that goes on a map but like your base level is just like you just mold the shape of it right and then you can import whatever textures you want is that something you'd want to see where it, correct me if i'm wrong but in halo 5 you're limited to the textures that 343 gives you right would you want to be able to import any texture you create in like photoshop or whatnot into a map in infinite um yeah i think that would be great however i don't think 343 as a corporation is gonna want that because people would probably take that out of out of hand you know but um I'm just being honest, you know, I, I think that people would take advantage of that. I, I think that there's just going to be a variety of options that they're going to provide. And I do believe that Forge is going to get several updates throughout these 10 years that are going to become just even better and better. And, and is that I do believe Forge will evolve with the game. So like, let's say, for instance, they get an update in lighting, they get an update in... I don't know, you know, some environmental changes, something like further detail. I believe that if anything changes in the campaign and multiplayer, that's one thing that's going to change in Forge, right? I believe that just as, you know, this is a games of service, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to constantly evolve and you're going to get DLCs and all this stuff. And I believe with each one, what would be smart is just to, to, to keep the main core of what keeps the community of Halo alive, right? Um updated fresh and new and really immersive because you've seen the stuff that i was able to do in forge and you're you're playing video behind there i think right yeah. so like um it's it's been so much fun to me but i'll be honest with you the thing that that bothers me is the fact that i just i feel limited right and i know there's only so much that they can do and i give them mad props for what they were able to do because it's an incredible system for what it is right but I'm just looking forward to something in the future where it's like, wow, I, I feel limitless here. I feel like there's so many opportunities and I'm creating an environment that looks legitimately real. 
Yeah, no, that that totally makes sense. I I follow that completely. Uh, so the the next kind of question or, or point that I wanted to talk about was so in Halo Five, they implemented and I'm probably gonna butcher whatever they called it, but it's like the file browser where you can go in and you can search for maps based off maps and game modes based off of things like tags or based on the amount of likes that different maps have or you can search not only by someone's gamer tag or someone's file share but you have some other searchability options do you think that halo infinite needs to expand upon that or is halo 5's file browser system something that the current forge community is happy with i think progression and always is important necessary and needed um i think they made a very good move with halo 5 when it came to the custom browser and and your ability to find things with ease and i absolutely believe that although we're happy with what it is um it definitely needs to be improved and i i feel like in ways that it could be improved is is by just making it more of a um maybe this is silly to say but more of like a main feature because i know one thing's for certain you're gonna have since it's free to play you're gonna have all these guys that have played halo right for years and years and years bringing all their new friends and then you're gonna have people that haven't played halo in 10 years come back and say dude let's do the custom games Mm -hmm. you know it needs to be that needs to be a core feature right um because I, i i'm feeling like the free to play multiplayer is one massive mode you know and I don't believe that it's all the custom games. I don't believe it's it's all the arena modes. I don't I don't know if it's all that, right? I think it's kind of like a Warzone and COD model, right? Where you're going to have a massive... Uh, and put me on record for saying this, okay? Because I may be totally wrong. But I absolutely believe that what this is going to be is it's, it's going to be a mix of the objectives that you would see in a Battle Royale. It's going to be the objectives of what you see in like a Halo Reach uh, invasion. And it's going to be at the scale, and it's going to be kind of similar to the gameplay of what you would see with AI and whatnot as Warzone. Because they, 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 they were the ones that invented and brought Warzone to life. And I believe that absolutely they're going to implement something that's a mix of Warzone, Invasion, and just BTB type arena style you know, gameplay. I, I think that's going to be one of the biggest things because they know that the community loves BTB. That was one of the, the, the weak points that they had in Halo 5, right? So that's, I feel like, going to come back in a big way. Um, I don't know exactly how many people are going to be able to play, but I do not. I confidently feel like they're not going to stay with 16 players at a max. I feel like that is absolutely going to increase. Um but I, I think that specific mode, some type of in, you know invasion inspired, battle royale inspired, um, BTB you know environment and experience will be the thing that's accessible to everybody. And microtransactions will be all over that thing, similar to COD, battle pass, all that stuff. Like if people just have to come to that realization, or they could completely surprise us all and not do that. But I'm curious how they're gonna make money. You know what I mean? And, like, I just, I feel like the way Halo is going to do is going to be in a very positive way. People are going to be very happy with it because it's going to have a lot of callbacks to the original as well, right? But it's going to be modernized, and I feel like that's essential. But that's going to be the main core thing that's free. And then I believe that customs and all that other stuff um, is going to be actually in the game that you have to buy with the campaign and whatnot, similar to how COD was worked out. Yeah, I mean... I, I won't say that's outside of the realm of possibility. I think that would be a huge mistake. I think that if they're going to go out and say that multiplayer is going to be free to play, it it honestly should probably be the whole game. Call of Duty can get away with it because Call of Duty is the biggest and most popular franchise that still has a price tag attached to it. But if you look at any of the other majorly popular games, they're free to play across the board. You look at Fortnite, other than the weird single player mode that no one plays that's free to play across the board you look at valorant that's free to play across the board league of legends free to play free to play across the board apex free to play so i think if they decided to do something like that where they're we'll call it their war zone style mode right their big scale bigger mode if that was free but they tried to charge for custom games or forge or arena matchmaking or any of the other aspects I personally think that would be a huge mistake. Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't do that, but I, I kind of hope they don't. You know what? Yeah, I'm actually with you. 
Um, I'm not sure how I really got down that 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 hole right there, but I I was thinking just maybe it's because I brought up the battle pass and all that, but I I do agree in the sense that if it's going to be multiplayer, it's going to be everything, uh, and then campaign as an experience, which will have a multiplayer aspect within it as well, because I believe maybe you'll be able to just play as chief, but do you think it ever be a possibility where they kind of do the Halo Reach thing where you bring your own Spartan in maybe after the campaign's finished and you can go in with a fire team of your own and kind of do quests and explore and all that? Do you think that's even a possibility? Something that's unique to people that have actually bought the game? Oh, for sure. I, Especially if Infinite's going to be this long project. I don't know. On day one, we might just get a regular campaign, but I fully see, I could see them totally adding like, hey, this is our Halo raid, right? You use your Spartan, you hop in with your friends and you do this, or this is the firefight mode. If firefight comes back in Halo Infinite, I, it's probably going to cost money. Things like that, I, it, it, it's going to be a weird line with what costs money, what's free, and what all you can do with campaign. Because we've seen throughout, the, throughout all the games, we've seen the linear style of a Halo campaign, right? This will be interesting with it being like uh, pseudo open world what kind of replayability are they going to add to it because as much as we all love the halo campaigns and people do play them tons and tons of times because they're pretty good they at the end of the day they're a fairly linear first person shooter campaign the story is the same every single time you just run through you see cutscenes, you shoot the enemies and and at the end of the day that's that there's some collectibles you can discover and if you want to put challenges to it like lasso or run around and don't use your guns, then you can add a little bit more replayability to it. But I think with Infinite, with them going toward the open world model, and I know it's not like full open world, but I think we might start to see more of those Destiny style elements kind of find their way into Halo Infinite, maybe not on day one, but we might see more of the replayable style content that you can do over and over for a high score and maybe you get not necessarily loot, because I don't know if Halo Infinite is going to be like loot based on the campaign front, but maybe you get different armors or different skins or different nameplates and stuff that you can unlock by doing these different these different replayable modes, different amounts of times and whatnot. I agree with you, and I I, I just I, whatever route they take, I personally, I mean, we talked about this earlier. I I feel as a content creator, I I'm very hopeful for this game. I know that all it's going to take is the team, which I'm sure is eager beyond belief to share about this game. is going to share some things that will be new and that will be innovative and, and certain people will probably not be happy with it. But I feel like the majority of people will be like, you know what? This is cool. This is fresh. Let's give it a shot. Uh, and I, and I do believe that Halo is going to come back in a very nostalgic way. And it's going to come back in a very uh, unique way which I, I think Bungie was even taking the game in the first place. You, you saw that they introduced armor abilities. You saw that uh, initially Halo was actually supposed to be an open world, you know? Like, they, they had a lot of these visions for what this game was but never became. And, and I believe a lot of those visions just got implemented into this next game, Destiny. And I do believe that looking at where Bungie would have taken it, which not a lot of people have talking about and <laughs> talked about that, but I do believe Halo, if they had it for another ten years, would have gone to some route like this. Because even in Halo Five, you look back at that game, that I think that was the first game ever where we actually traveled to different planets in the campaign. Correct? Uh, yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> I'm not a huge lore person, but that checks out to me. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying is there's certain elements and you saw some RPG elements where you, you sat around and you listened to scientists in the game and and you were with your team and, and whatnot. I think the whole purpose is just to be able to make it a more immersive environment, more immersive universe where it's not just Chief and Cortana, which believe me, as an OG Halo fan, I love that, you know? But I believe it's going to become just a lot deeper into the lore, opens up the universe a lot more, and I think that could be a saving grace for halo it could create new generations of people that love halo for the next 10 or however many years that they you know make the the, the game continuous for but i i feel like it could be a good thing i'll just leave it at that without talking too much <laughs> well i think we've had pretty good discussion about 
Forge and Halo Infinite, did you have any other Forge related topics you kind of want to hit on the way out? You know, I, I would just say that for anyone out there that has a lot of ideas within their minds, please just go to MCC, go to Halo 5, like use it, learn it, try it. I mean, whether or not you, you think the games are dead or not, they're great tools to be able to create cool environments. And that's the reason why I got into it. And I built a really cool community around here now. And there's recognition and people are playing it. And there's nothing more satisfying than being able to create an experience and then having people actually play it and, and give you feedback and say, hey, I had a great time on that. Like, it's a rewarding feeling. It, it's meaningful work, you know, because it means something. And uh, it, it, I would just encourage anyone that, that has these ideas in their mind to at least just go out there and try, you know? And, and I think that when it comes to Halo Infinite, you are correct. I don't think it's going to be behind a paywall. Um, I believe that this is going to be free range and that we're going to quite honestly probably have the largest Halo community of all time. Um, and with that, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for growth. So hope everyone that's watching this takes advantage of that and, and, shares and creates with within their mind and we get to all experience it but yeah it's been a pleasure man honestly to be on here i in the comments below if anyone wants to leave questions for me or or you know whatever the case may be please do so and um yeah i mean i think i think that would be i think we covered forge pretty well awesome yeah i would just say uh you kind of mentioned that you think this is going to be the the biggest the halo community has been and i I'm totally on board. I think with it going free to play and just the fact that gaming has grown over time on launch, I fully believe this will be the most players and eyeballs that Halo has ever had. Now, the real test will be six years, two years or six months, two years, five years down the line. Have we retained those players? That question's up in the air. But I think on launch, 343 has every opportunity in the world to make Halo one of the biggest games again. And we're just going to have to wait and kind of see if it happens. Um, I just want to say one last thing. Um, I'm willing to bet that what what was the what was the picture of Halo Three with a million people playing at once? Was that what it was? Yeah. I that's gonna be blown out of the water when Infinite launches. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, the a million players that Halo Three had that is a amazing accomplishment. That in terms of the overall gaming landscape and the overall percentage of people on a platform playing a game, that might never be topped. You might never have the same percentage of people on Xbox playing Halo, right? Because back then, Halo 3 was the game, and everyone on, on an Xbox 360 played Halo 3. My, well, I remember when Halo 3 came out, my entire friends list was playing Halo 3. Now, I don't think you're going to see that with Halo Infinite, but... With it being free to play, you're going to have a ton of Xbox players. You're going to have a ton of PC players. And so there is, and just gaming in general has grown leaps and bounds since Halo 3 released. So yeah, I think we're going to shatter the million number for sure. Whether or not 343 kind of puts those numbers out, I don't know, because they kind of hide those numbers a bit more now than they used to. But yeah, but um, yeah, I, I love the conversation today. Uh, you had a lot of good points, and hopefully I brought some good ones to the table, too. Yeah, for sure, man. I enjoyed talking to you. Why don't you tell everyone where they can kind of find your content and where they can come follow you at? Awesome. Yeah. So if you're watching until this point, what are we at? Like 30-something, 40-something minutes in? <laughs> yeah. If you're watching this far, then you're you're awesome. And uh, I would just simply say, if you feel like I provided you value, um, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, um, Infinite Forges. Uh, if you look up Halo 5 Forge, you'll probably see one of my videos in there or, or something like that. Uh, and, and I'm just, I'm putting out a lot of content, little tips and tricks and cool little neat videos for Forge. So if you're into that type of stuff, if you're into custom games, if you're into anything, quite honestly, Halo, um, this is going to be a really cool channel for you. And I'm going to stay consistent all throughout this dry period as well as through Infinite. So, uh, check it out. And also Twitter, Twitter is a big one. It's a fun one. Uh, that is Infinite Forges as well. Thanks to Arash. <laughs> yep, and I'll I'll put all of his links below so you don't have to try and spell them. Uh, most of the footage throughout this video, assuming I had enough, is footage from his videos, his maps. I also have some gameplay footage from a custom night that I held a while ago playing some of his maps. So you'll see a lot of what kind of his, his maps look like and some of his content looks like. But obviously, 
go over and check it out. Like he said, it's kind of a dry period right now in Halo, but if you're looking for kind of new things to spice it up, I mean, recently, it's probably a month or two now ago, he created a battle royale mode in Halo 5, so he's He's still out there. He's creating fun and interesting things that you can check out. And his maps, they really are super cool. So make sure you guys go over and check it out. And thanks everyone for watching.